Good evening and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, December 13th, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the clerk to note our starting time for the minutes as 7 p.m. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live and archived capture. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances when deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to councillors, staff, and delegations who will participate in the meeting tonight. This time I invite your decorum over the course of the meeting. Clerk has advised that we have all councillors accounted for at the table this evening. As a special treat, because we acknowledge that it was Councillor Duncan's birthday yesterday, I believe it was, um, we'll sing a little song. So uh, I think Councillor Rothwell, you agreed you would join me. Uh, maybe you should unmute and we'll uh, give Councillor Duncan a, a vibrant happy birthday here. All right. You with me, uh, Councillor Rothwell? Yes. All right, here we go. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Councillor Duncan. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Apparently, WebEx is a difficult medium to sing a happy birthday song on. And, um, so, Councillor Rothwell and I will have to work on our timings, but our sentiment is fond. Councillor Duncan, I hope you appreciate it in that light. All Thanks right. Thanks very much, everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's move on to item number 2.1 on our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with a perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared already in writing to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing already done to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should any potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act as a priority item at any point in the meeting. And tonight we'll begin with Councillor Anstead. Welcome Councillor Anstead, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, this evening through you, I would like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 5.5.1, the accounts, specifically the daycare, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare, and also on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Anstett. Uh, next up is Councillor Behrens. Welcome, Councillor Behrens. Good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. This evening, I will declare a conflict with 5.5. 5.1, the daycare accounts, as I have grandchildren attending the North Perth Spinright Child and Family Center, as well as after school. 13 on the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barons. And next up, I believe, is Deputy Mayor Kellum. Welcome, Deputy Mayor Kellum. Yes, good evening, uh, Mayor Todd. Yes, I would also like to declare community Pecuniary interest on item 5.5.1, uh, specifically the uh, accounts uh, pertaining to Perth Meadows, first off, as my mother and father in law are tenants there. And then, secondly, the daycare, as my grandson attends the St. Mary's Child Care Center. 
And then 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And are there any other councillors wishing to avail themselves of the opportunity to declare a perceived pecuniary interest? We're not seeing any, so let's move forward. To explain our virtual processes, I'll be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that will be put before us tonight. I will do this to some degree alphabetically. Should the councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so, and I'll move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental without intervention from me. We will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the speaker's list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors are reminded that if I believe you are not audible, I will call on you. Councillors are further asked to maintain a mute state during the web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, then return to mute. Regarding item 2.2 of our agenda, I have an amendment uh, advisory from the clerk and I'll invite her to take the floor. Just let me set my audio visual settings so we don't create a black hole. Hold on, please. Council, we have one amendment to tonight's meeting and that is under delegations and public meetings, the removal of item 4.3, which was a delegation from Jamie Pinn. Thank you, Clerk Bearfels. And so I have a resolution for consideration relating to the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting that reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting as amended be approved. Deputy Mayor Kellum, why don't we start with you tonight? Will you serve as mover for that? I sure will make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our second? Yes, I would certainly second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Councillor Roth, well, uh, my vote didn't come up. I'm in favor. Thank you. And with that, that is carried. Thank you very much. That brings us to agenda item three, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require Council's recognition and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any Councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, or individual action may do so. There are only two items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular Council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion, action or correction we're not seeing oh councillor andreessen councillor andreessen welcome thank you good evening uh, mayor kasenberg i just noticed on the consent agenda for 3.2 um i believe it should read that it's 14 million for municipalities in perth wellington um from um, MPP Randy Pettipies. It's just a misprint on the agenda. I just thought I'd point that out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. The clerk is uh, giving me the nod. I believe she'll make uh, the appropriate corrections uh, as, uh, as she wraps up uh, the documentation for this meeting. Okay, so I have a resolution here to uh, receive these uh, two items. Uh, that reads as follows, that con consent items 3.1 to 3.2 be received for information and the December 6, 2021 minutes of the regular council meeting be adopted. Councillor Richardson, welcome tonight. Uh, will you serve as mover for that? I will move that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Rothwell, my trusty singing companion, will you be our seconder? 
I will second the motion, yes. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you very much. At this time, it's proposed to be a move to agenda item number four. This e evening, we have opportunity to conduct a public meeting related to a land planning matter. To facilitate the public meeting, we must temporarily adjourn from our regular council meeting. I have before me a motion to make that happen. It reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7 11 p.m. for the purpose of a public meeting under the Planning Act concerning the application for a zoning bylaw amendment by David and Margot Carson. And I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover on this one. And welcome, Terry. Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you serve a second? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. That means we are temporarily adjourned from the regular council meeting and gives me the opportunity to say welcome to those who are attending. This is a public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act for uh, a proposed amendment to the North Perth Zoning Bylaw. This is a statutory public meeting to deal with an application for an amendment to the North Perth Zoning Bylaw submitted by David and Margot Carson. Correspondence, reports, and comments received regarding this application will be considered by Council. Those in attendance remotely wishing to make comment concerning this application will be given an opportunity to do so. Anyone wishing to appeal Council's decision in this matter must make verbal submission during this public meeting or have made a written submission to the council. Those who want to receive notice of the municipality's decision concerning this application must notify the clerk by email or telephone, giving their mailing address and telephone number. At this time, I will call for a summary of this application and amendment, and this will be offered by Sean Yildmaz, who is the planner, the North Perth planner with the County of Perth Planning Department. Welcome, Mr. Yildmaz. Thank you, and good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, uh, members of Council. David and Margot Carson have submitted the application to amend the Municipality of North Perth Zoning Bylaw. Uh, the Zoning Bylaw Amendment is a condition of County of Perth Application for Consent B0521, which is a provisionally approved surplus farm dwelling severance. The subject property is an exterior lot located on the northwest side of Perth Line 86 and Road 157. Uh, as a condition of the consent for a surplus farm dwelling severance, the, the zoning bylaw amendment must limit the use of both the retained and severed lots. Now each lot will remain in the agricultural zone, but will include provisions which are imposed to the consent application process. The retained lands, uh, which are approximately 19.7 hectares uh, or 48.7 acres, will remain in the agricultural zone, but placed into the A-62 zone. The A-62 zone prohibits the establishment of a new residential dwelling on the property. Uh, this parcel contains farmland and will be continued to be farmed. The severed lands are approximately 0 0.46 hectares or 1.12 acres and will be placed into the A-1 zone. This zone limits use to one single detached residential dwelling and accessory uses. The severed lot contains an existing dwelling, septic, and well. Section 2.3.4 of the Provincial Policy Statement provides policies regarding lot creation uh, in agricultural, uh, on agricultural lands. And this includes lot creation for residents deemed surplus to a farming operation. The, the provincial policy statement provides specific requirements and conditions that must be imposed, which were largely addressed through the consent application process. However, as a condition of the severance, an amendment to the local implementing zoning bylaw is required 
that will prohibit any new permanent residential dwelling from establishing on the retained farmland and that the proposed severed lot must only be used for residential purposes. The zoning, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is consistent with the provincial policy statement, is in conformity with the County of Perth official plan and complies with the municipality of North Perth zoning bylaw. As such, it is staff's recommendation that North Perth Council approve the application for a zoning bylaw amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yilmaz. Um, while you're available to us, can you provide us with information about the notice of public meeting? Yes, absolutely. So a notice uh, of public meeting was posted on the property as well as sent out to uh, neighbors within 120 meters of the subject lands. Uh, and the notice was provided 20 days before this public meeting as per the planning. Thank you. And I'll ask uh, both you and Clerk Berfelds if she has inputs about correspondence, comments, and reports received to date about this application. Start with you, Mr. Yilmaz. Uh, I have not received anything at this point. Okay, so Clerk Berfelds is telling me in the council chambers that she has not received any uh, reports. Thank you. Uh, so then let's move forward to the opportunity for public comment. At this time, I'll call for those who are in support of the application other than the applicant to identify themselves and I will make them the floor available to them. Clerk Perfelds, are we aware of anyone on this call who has so indicated? We are not. Uh, second, then, I will call for those who are in opposition to the application, if they are in attendance, to make themselves known. Fairfelds, are we aware of anyone who has registered before this meeting for the purposes of making comment in opposition? Uh, the clerk is indicating to me in the chamber, no. And finally, opportunity for the applicant or the applicant's agent to make comment about this application. Fairfelds, are we aware of an, in, in, an intention on the part of the applicant to make comment? And, and, and the clerk is advising me that there has been no request from the applicant. At this time, then, it, there is the opportunity for members of council to make comments or ask questions. Council, do you have any comments or questions to make? Perhaps are we seeing any uh, requests of that nature? We're not seeing any, so at this time, then, I believe we can uh, move to conclusion of this meeting. Uh, notice of the decision uh, by Council will be given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. The Council's decision is subject to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. And with that, I can bring forward a resolution to resume regular Council meeting through adjourning this public meeting. I have a motion before me to that effect. It reads that the public meeting for the purpose of a Planning Act application is now adjourned at 7.19 p.m. and the council reconvene into regular open council. Well, Councilor Anstead, can I call on you to be our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Behrens, will you be the seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate about this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Means that we are back into regular session. Pursuant to the public meeting, we do have two uh, items of business. Uh, the first is a general resolution and the second being the amending bylaw. Let's uh, take them in order then. Uh, first, I have a resolution that reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the application for a zoning bylaw amendment affecting property described as Lot 19, Concession 1, 5618 Perth Line 86 in the Wallace Ward of the Municipality of North Perth. The proposal is consistent with the policy, Provincial Policy Statement 2020, conforms to the policies of the County of Perth official plan and meets the provisions of the North Perth Zoning Bylaw. Can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Callum, will you be our seconder? 
Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. We're looking for Councillor Councilor Rothwell. My vote vote didn't come up in favor. Thank you very much. And with that, that is carried. Next up, then we have the amending uh, bylaw. Uh, it reads as follows: that bylaw number one twenty six dash twenty twenty one being a bylaw to amend the North Perth zoning bylaw number six dash zb dash nineteen ninety nine as amended, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. The said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Richardson, can I call on you to be a mover for this one? I will move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And Councillor Rothwell, we're still experiencing some East Crab connectivity, it looks like, uh, or disconnectivity. What do you say? Looks uh, good. Yes. We got I'm it. in favor. In Thank favor. You. And so with that, uh, that motion is carried as well. Thank you very much. Uh, that allows us to move forward to the delegation that we have scheduled for this meeting. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome Gwyneth Wood, Community and Family Services Manager for the Salvation Army Listful. Gwyneth and I have had a little bit of uh, interaction last week with uh, her supporting my little singing encounter on the main streets. And um, so I, I, uh, I, I served well there, Gwyneth, I hope. Uh, she will provide council with an update on the Hope Links Project in North Perth. Ms. Wood, the floor is yours. Good evening, and uh, thank you, councillors, for welcoming our delegation this evening. On the call tonight behind me, I have uh, Major Wendy Johnston, and also in another little box on your screen is Michael Metcalf, who is our new community outreach coordinator. While it is Christmas season and Christmas at the Salvation Army is synonymous with toys and Christmas hampers, um, this year alone, even more so as we've seen anywhere from a 35 to 40% increase in our numbers from last year. That said, the reason we're here tonight isn't to speak about Christmas, but as Mayor Todd said, to update you on Hope Links North Perth. And uh, before I start, this is a new laptop and I've had some audio issues, so please stop me if you can't hear me. So the idea of Hope Links has been discussed and prepared and pondered and planned for over a year now. And we wanted to reach out to you so that you were up to speed on just where we're at. So Michael, who is here, like I said tonight, I don't know if you've got your camera on Michael, but you can give a little wave there. He comes to us with extensive experience working with the most vulnerable in our population. And he'll be heading up Hope Links as well as Hope Eats, which is a hot meal program beginning in January. Um, Major Wendy Johnson is the core officer, which means that she is both the church pastor and the executive director, as it were, of community and family services and the thrift store. And as Mayor Todd said, my name is Gwyneth Woods and I'm the family services manager here. The first slide that uh, Clerk Bearfelt has put up here is, uh, it highlights what each of us already knows. We have begun to see the need in our community. Homelessness, which was largely hidden in our rural community as couch surfers and transient individuals has become much more permanent and much more visible. It has in the words of United Way Perth Huron become unignorable. And we also know that housing prices and rent prices while always attainable for some, have continued to, to soar at exponential rates. 
So what this, as well as other economic factors and our quickly growing population means is that we simply have more people needing more help. So what are we doing? You can see the next slide there. That's the big question, right? What are we actually doing about it? If you can click to the next one there. Community and Family Services has operated in this community for decades. And during that time, we have always been both a source of assistance and a source of information. So locally, we're already operating a food bank, food literacy programming, tax return assistance, Christmas assistance, backpack assistance. We're acting as an agent for programs like Ontario Electricity Support, Low Income Energy Assistance Program, Feline Friends, and even North Perth's Sports for Kids program. We didn't set out just to do more because quite frankly, we do quite a bit. But what we did set out to do was to listen to our community and the needs that weren't being met, the gaps that weren't being filled, and the people that weren't being heard. And that's where we see the development of Hope Links. Hope Links is not a program cooked up at one desk or developed in a silo as if it were as it were. It has been thoughtfully and carefully developed with the help of committee and advisors. And we feel it's a balanced, sustainable program where we put the needs of the community members first while operating in a way that both respects those we serve as those who are as well as those who are serving. We can skip to the next slide there. So Hope Links North Perth is designed to offer tangible assistance to community members in need while creating space for relationship building. Tangible assistance will include a meal, access to showers, access to laundry facilities, and in building relationships with guests, we provide doors to further community connection. And while it's not what I'm here to talk about tonight, Hope Eats is also connected to this program. And it is a community hot meal program aimed at supporting low income community members with nutritious meals once a week, as well as supplying Hope Links with meals during its program time. We are a supported partner of United Way Perth Huron in the Hope Links program. What that means is that the budget dollars specified for Hope Links are sourced from two avenues. The first being Salvation Army fundraising and donor dollars, dollars that our community has entrusted to us to do the work needing done. The second is through grant dollars from United Way Perth Huron. What that means is that there are checks and balances in funding and in service. The Hope Links program is not a shelter. The intention is not to have overnight guests. It is, however, intended to be a respite, a help and a connection point. We will offer a warm meal, the opportunity to shower, and soon the opportunity to do your laundry. But that's not all. As I mentioned, we hired a community outreach coordinator who will be present in the program along with trained volunteers we're, we're tasked with properly equipping our volunteers to serve and to be of service. We want them to be knowledgeable in what agencies and services are right here in our community. And this way, as guests begin to develop goals of their own, whether large like job placement or small like getting their paperwork in order for ID, our volunteers are ready to help. I've developed three documents to guide the process through its initial development. The first is a volunteer booklet. This will allow potential volunteers the opportunity to learn more about the program and what training will be required and how they can connect. The second is a program guidebook. The program, the, this booklet outlines all of the procedures that we have in place, everything from intake to cleaning protocol, the rules around boundaries and around confidentiality, those types of things. And the third booklet, a guide to service combines both of these as well as giving the overall vision for the program. Each of these booklets can be made available to you if you're interested in them. As the program develops, 
We expect change. We intend to welcome the feedback, both of our guests, as well as our volunteers and our community. It's our desire to invite other agencies in. We want them to have the opportunity to connect with guests, to educate our volunteers, and to provide information about the services that they offer. This is the Hope Links program, but the program can't operate without a site to do so. Daryl and Ann Voskamp own the Village Table at 295 Main Street West, and they have been lovingly, and I mean lovingly, renovating for this program in mind, or with this program in mind. They've installed showers in the basement and are nearing completion of the main meeting area with plans to retrofit another area for the washers and dryers. We have already gathered a number of items for the program through generous community donations, including security cameras, tables, proper sharps disposal units, and other items needed to operate well. This has been a bigger project than many imagined, but it has been a project where we have felt incredible community support spurring us on. We've seen individuals give generously of their time, their talents, and their dollars in order to extend that love and care to those in our community who are most vulnerable. And before I ask you if there are any questions, I want to give you one more chart. The temptation is to see this program as a standalone, and I want you to see how it connects. Yes, we hope that it connects with other service agencies, but we also want you to see how it connects with all that we do. So this is a diagram of our work at Community and Family Services Listowel. And you can see that both Hope Links and Hope Eats are part of a circle of care that we are creating around those that we serve. And additionally, I would like to say I have sent on information from our community information night last Thursday um, with all of the, the basic who, what, where, why, and how of the program as well. And at this time, I would invite any questions or comments from you as well. Thank you so much for an enlightening presentation. And uh, we appreciate the offer of documentation and information uh, in more depth that has been made available to this council. Uh, councillors at this time, any comments or questions? Councillor Andreessen. Thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I uh, just want to extend my my sincere gratitude for the work of uh, the Salvation Army and the United Way. Um, I just am so overwhelmed by the work that you do to ensure the safety and the comfort and um, the consideration of those in need. And not only at Christmas time, but also in, in the work ahead that you've, you've, you're laying forward for Hope Links and, and Hope Eats. And I'm excited to see that the great work that will be extended to those in need in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. For preference, do we have any others with questions at this time or comments? Okay, we're not seeing anybody. Uh, oh, Councillor Rothwell. Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Gwyneth, for your presentation. Uh, this is a very exciting uh, project, and uh, as you said, it's uh, wonderful to see uh, so many uh, groups and agencies uh, working together uh, for this specific project. Now, you've made it clear that this is not uh, going to be for overnight uh, shelter or uh, shelter for overnight stay. Uh, but so we have heard elsewhere that there is a need in the community. Is there um, other uh, potential project down the road for that uh, specific uh, shelter or overnight stay opportunity? Thanks very much. So for this program in particular, no. Um, I would direct you back to the city of Stratford. Uh, they do have um options in place for individuals the issue is that there is not a local 
um, hotel or unit that can take anyone. And so that's where we run into issues in North Perth is that what we have available to us becomes out of town, so Stratford. Um, but no, we, we do not at this point, uh, this in itself is a big undertaking and a shelter is even more so and comes with quite a bit more um, background and a lot more dollars needed. And really the intention of the, the county is housing first, right? It's in, the intention is to get people into something permanent. So no, not at this time. Thank you very much. And uh, this does not diminish the uh, support for this pro uh, these programs. I think it's fantastic and uh, it's a great uh, opportunity to see us move forward, but thank you very much. And I'll lend my voice to my colleagues. Um, this it's the last few years, I think, as mayor, as you said, the, the issues around the rough homeless and functionally homeless have, have continued to grow as, as the community has grown. And um, I find myself very um, concerned and quite involved in this issue, especially over the last year. Um, really delighted that this initiative is uh, is coming to life and look forward to the contributions that it will make to our community. I, I think on behalf of the council, I can say that we are grateful for all of the efforts that the Salvation Army makes uh, and its partnerships with the and others in, in achieving this outcome um, is a testament to the, the ongoing commitment in this community uh, to uh, make sure that all have access to reasonable shelter and food. And uh, those priorities uh, continue and will continue to, to drive our success as a community. So thank you so much for your, your presentation and all of the work that's underneath this. I can only imagine uh, how much uh, writing efforts have gone into uh, the various guides and materials, um, the research that had to go underneath that and, and for all that effort, uh, we appreciate that. And, and we welcome your colleague to the community and uh, look forward to uh, seeing his wonderful face. And is there a beard there, dude? Um, seeing the beard there too. Um, uh, welcome to the Beard Club for Men in Listable. Uh, thank so you. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for having us. And I would just I would just reiterate too that all of the work that we do, anything that we do is really only possible because of this community. We have an incredible Absolutely. community here. And, and we notice it when we go to any other, you know, events with other communities, we know how collaborative it is and how supportive it is. So thank you to you guys as well. Appreciate it and the commitment is there. All right, um, that allows us council to move on to agenda item number five, reports from departments and key staff. Uh, at this point, we don't have reports from the CAO's department uh, for tonight's meeting, but I know that uh, lots of labor is going on there these days. And, uh, and, um, and so I commend the CAO and his team for all that they're doing, uh, even if it's uh, looking behind the scenes. Uh, next, then, let's move on to uh, agenda item 5.2, reports from the clerk's department. For item 5.2.1, council is asked to receive a report on an application for consent to sever related to lands in the Elm Award as brought forward by owners Dennis and Esther Kupkefer. Uh, council is further asked to make a recommendation on this application to Perth County Council. I'm going to call again on County of Perth planner Sean Yilmaz uh, who works on files related to North Perth to explain this request. Mr. Yilmaz, the floor is yours. Hello, and thank you again. Um, yeah, so we ha have just the one application for consent, which has been submitted by Dennis and Esther Kepfer, and which proposes to sever a new farm parcel. The application appears to be a straightforward request to split the existing farm property uh, in half and ultimately have two separate farm properties. The subject property is approximately 60.1 hectares or 148.6 acres, is in an interior farm lot and is considered to be a through lot, which is a lot uh, with frontage on two streets, but is not an exterior lot. If approved, the severed lot would be made up of the north half of the property, which abuts line 71, 
and would have a total lot area of 30 hectares or 74.2 acres. This land consists of vacant farmland. Uh, and the retained lot would be made up of the south half of the property with frontage along line 68 and contain the farm building cluster that includes an existing farm dwelling, barn, at, and two sheds and would have a total lot area of 30.1 hectares or 74.4 acres. Each lot would also have sufficient public road frontage with the severed lot having approximately 601 meters um, along line 71 and the retained land having will continue to have approximately 605 meters along line 68. At this time, no buildings or structures are proposed for the severed lands. However, nothing would prohibit the establishment of permitted uses on these lands in the future. The proposed consent application is considered to be lot creation. Now, section 2.3.4.1 of the provincial policy statement states that lot creation in prime agricultural areas is discouraged, um, however, may only be permitted for agricultural uses, provided that the lots are of a size appropriate for the type of agricultural uses common in the area and are sufficiently large to maintain flexibility for future changes in the type or size of agricultural operations. Uh, the area of land proposed to be severed from the subject property is considered an appropriate size to accommodate various types of farming operations in the future uh, and the proposed lot area and frontage meet the requirements of the North Perth zoning bylaw. The subject property is largely within the agriculture designation of the County of Perth official plan uh, and a small portion is within the natural resources and environment designation but is unaffected by the severance. Section 5.6.2.1 of the County official plan lists five criteria uh, and three sub-criteria by which applications for new lot creation for farming use are to be evaluated. The application has been found to conform with section 5.6.2.1. Farming is the existing and intended use of both lots um, with the size of each new lot deemed to be appropriate for a diversity of farming uses suitable to the characteristics of the general area. Uh, as well as meeting the requirements of the North Perth Zoning Bylaw for agricultural lots. An MDS-1 calculation was also performed for the new agricultural lot by planning staff, uh, where any dwelling on the new lot must maintain uh, a minimum of 440 metres of separation from the swine operation on the retained lands, which is the closest uh, livestock operation. Due, the, due to the size and frontage of the new farm parcel, that is proposed, there would exist suitable locations for a future dwelling on the severed lot that would comply with MDS-1 requirements and that would not hinder potential future expansion opportunities for nearby housing facilities. The general consent policies contained under section 16.3 of the county official plan also apply and require that matters related to road access grading and drainage, land use compatibility, natural hazards, servicing and local zoning compliance be considered. During the review, it was noted that the proposed severance satisfies these policies. Uh, as such, the application has been found to be consistent with the provincial policy statement and conforms with the applicable policies of the County of Perth official plan. Staff have no objections to the proposed county, excuse me, the proposed consent to sever uh, conditions of consent have been included to ensure that the intended severance is permitted to be registered in accordance with the policies of the County of Perth official plan. As such, it is staff's recommendation that North Perth Council recommend that the County of Perth Land Division Committee or its designate approve the application for consent to sever uh, by Dennis and Esther Kepper. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Yilmaz. Uh, Council, any questions or first comments on this matter? Okay, we're not seeing any indication of that, so I have a resolution that uh, uh, will affect the recommendation from the planner. Uh, it reads as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth receive the report entitled Application for Consent to Sever Number B13-21 by Dennis and Esther Kipfer 
affecting lands described as lot 34 and west part of lot 35 concession 12 Elma Ward 5116 line 68 municipality of North Perth dated December 13th 2021 prepared by the county planner for information and that the council recommends that the county of Perth land division committee or its designate approve the application for consent to sever number B13-21 for lands described as lot 34 and west part of lot 35 concession 12 Elma Ward 5116968 municipality of North Perth subject to the following conditions and there are seven three of which are from the county and, and four of which are from the municipality I elected not to read those into the record but they are in the reports before you Councillor Seiler, can I call on you to be the mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as the seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, that allows us to move down to item 5.3 on our agenda, reports from the programs department. We have no reports coming from that department this evening. Uh, also for 5.4 from the facilities department, we don't have a report this evening to council. I know that both of those groups are working diligently on a range of files. That allows us to move to reports from our finance department as item 5.5. .5. As item 5.5.1, finance staff has brought forward for council review the accounts as of this day, December 13th, 2021. I'll note that some councillors have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and will absent themselves thus from consideration and voting. Are there any questions about this matter for staff from those who are remaining in participation? Seeing none, I have a resolution that reads as follows. That the following summary of accounts be received by council for information. The total is $1,325,566.84. Councillor Anstead, can I, uh, no, I can't ask Councillor Anstead. Councillor Duncan, can I call on you to be our mover? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you be our second? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And who are we missing? My vote is not popping up. I'm in favor. Mr. Andreessen, with that vote, that is carried. Thank you. And now we can move on to item 5.6, reports from our Environmental Services Department. Item 5.6.1 invites Council to approve an amendment to authorize the Manager of Environmental Services to sign amending agreement number two to the Product Care Municipal Industry Stewardship Materials Services Agreement. I invite you to say that at all. Five times really fast. I'll invite uh, Mr. Hackett, our manager of environmental services, to address this item. Mr. Hackett, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. Uh, there have been a number of transitions of our recycling programs over the past few years uh, to the producer responsibility framework. Uh, for example, tires transitioned in January of 2019, batteries transitioned in 2020, electronics and electrical equipment transitioned in 2021. The mo most recently, the Municipal Hazardous and Special Waste Program transitioned on October 1st of this year, and still to come is the Blue Box transition, which is scheduled for 2024. Um, on September 30th of 2021, the operation of the MHSW program uh, that was operated by Stewardship Ontario ceased uh, operation. And so beginning on October 1st of 2021, the HSP or the Hazardous and Special Products Regulation came into effect. Um, and council may recall then that on October 9th of 2021, council directed the manager of environmental services to sign an amended agreement with Auto Automotive Materials Stewardship uh, or AMS. 
and they provide re recycling services for antifreeze, oil filters, and oil containers. So the remaining part of that transition for the MHSW program is for products such as paints, coatings, pesticides, and solvents. And we have had a uh, an agreement with Product Care Association since 2015. It was amended in 2016. Uh, the PCA will be acting as a producer responsibility organization or PRO under the new HSP regulation. So the agreement was attached for your information. Um, they have, there's just a few minor changes and they've also added um, a, a con a various pressurized containers to the list of things that are in the agreement. And I also wanted to note that the new, this new agreement will or amended agreement will be retroactive to October 1st of 2021. So the new PCA agreement with North Perth will pay the municipality and they pay us on an hourly rate for the hours that the landfill is in operation operating these programs. They'll pay us 835 for paints and coatings, um, three cents for pesticides, 58 cents for solvents and $1.18 per hour for pressurized containers that are non-refillable. So if you add them all together, that comes to $10.14 for hour, per hour for every hour that the landfill is open. And so that comes to $6,854 of revenue for the landfill for the year. Um, so I could take any questions if, uh, if there are any about the, the amended agreement. Thanks, Mr. Hackett. You didn't rise to my challenge of sitting there five times really fast. Hey, um, Council, any questions or first comments on this one? We're not seeing any, so I have a resolution for our consideration and apparently I have to see it again. Uh, the Council of the Municipality of North Perth authorized the Manager of Environmental Services to sign amending agreement number two to the Product Care Municipal Industry Stewardship ISP Materials Services Agreement. Can I call on Councillor Anstead to be your mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Behrens, will you be our seconder on that one? Yes, I will second that motion. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor. My vote didn't come up. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor Anstett. And with that, I believe we have all votes accounted for that is carried. Thank you. All right, let's um, move on then on our agenda. Numerically, we're at item 5.7, reports to the manager of operations. Uh, we don't have a report from that department tonight, but we know that they are, have been busy. And then we turn to item 5.8, reports from the fire department. Again, we have no report from the fire department for this meeting, so we appreciate their ongoing service to the community. Now that brings us to item six on our agenda for item 6.1 councillors are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or of our committees the usual contact approach or the speakers list applies clerk Berfels, do we have anyone seeking to speak on this one So we're not seeing any indication there. For item seven, we've received no items of correspondence which require further action. Uh, we're now at item eight on our agenda, which allows council to consider bylaws. We have no additional bylaws this evening for our consideration. That moves us down to item number nine on our agenda. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion this evening? We're not seeing any indication of that, which brings us to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? And the usual contact approach applies. Invitation to staff and council. We're not seeing anything in terms of announcements at this point in time, which allows us to move on then to agenda item number 11. We have one matter to be considered in a closed session of council. I will now read the resolution that explains and enables our action to enter into closed session. The resolution is as follows that the council that this committee, sorry, proceed in camera at 7.55 p.m. 
to address a matter pertaining to a proposed or pending acquisition sale of land for municipal or local board purposes regarding property described as concession one, part lot 30, RP 44R-4735, parts one and three, part, part two, Wallace Ward. Uh, can I call on uh, Deputy Mayor Callum to serve as our moving for this? Yes, I will make that motion. Thank you. Councillor Johnston, will you do the seconding duties here? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this motion to enter in camera session? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. And with that, then I will bang the gavel and let people know that we are moving into a closed session meeting of council. Any who are on the call have not been invited to participate in closed session should exit the meeting at this time. For everyone else who has been invited to stay, please remain here for a few moments while we reconfigure the audio visual to make sure that we are truly in camera. Please hold on.
Councillor Richardson, can we call on you to do your, your trusted duty here and tell us whether we're broadcasting again live to YouTube? Yes, just bear with me a moment while it's loading up. Still have the closed council meeting in progress splash screen up. Oh, here we go, I think. Hold, please. We're online. Thank you. Um, so that has concluded the closed session of council. I at, that allows us to move to item twelve on our agenda. At this time, we have no report for the public about the contents or actions of our closed session. Council has a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. I have a draft for that here that reads as follows. Bylaw number 137-2021 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover on this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this panel? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. And now that brings us to the point where all of our deliberations and action that was requested of us has been considered and addressed. I have a motion, therefore, to adjourn the meeting, which reads as follows. The council meeting adjourns at 8.05 p.m. to meet again for general council business on Monday. Uh, it's going to be Monday, December 20th at 7 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Anstead to be our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, will you be our trusty seconder tonight on that? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's not debatable, so let's have that vote. Oh, we don't have a vote in East Grab. Apparently queued up for this. So, are there any opposed? I'm not seeing or hearing anything. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Motion is carried. That means that this council is adjourned until its next regular meeting, which is Monday, December 20th, 2021. Thank you for a another meeting of council and uh, bid all a good night and a good week.